Yan Jin knew perfectly well that in primitive society, the greatest fitness is the key to survival. But it seemed to him that everything wasn't so bad, except that there wasn't even any cumin or chili here. At least in primitive society there were so many berries that Yan Jin could make a good wine out of them. When Yan Jin uses freshly made wine to cook his special fried fish, the local and wine flavor mix together and attract the attention of other animals. And Yan Jin can use the meat of animals to catch fish, many generations lived like this long before him. Thus, one big food chain is being completed and Yan Jin is now, finally, standing at the very top of it. When Yan Jin cooked the food he had mentioned earlier, a huge beast came to the smell and Yan Jin was very proud that he would be able to get such prey. The beast headed towards the hunter, but immediately fell into a pit littered with leaves and sticks to distract attention. Yan Jin walked up to the pit into which the beast had fallen and thought that this huge animal reminded him very much of a saber-toothed tiger. Then the beast angrily asked how dare someone like Yan Jin attack in Nudaka. Yan Jin was surprised that this huge beast could also speak. Then Yan Jin told the saber-toothed tiger his name and said that he was a mechanical engineer. Yan Jin remembered how he first came to this strange place, and now he caught a saber-toothed tiger with his own hands, which also knows how to speak. The saber-toothed tiger struggled to get out of the deep pit into which it had fallen, and Yan Jin thought that all his attempts would be unsuccessful, and he would fall down again and again. But everything turned out to be completely different from what Yan Jin imagined. Suddenly, the saber-toothed tiger ran up and jumped so high that it flew right over Yan Jin and Yan Jin could not believe that this tiger could jump so high. Then Yan Jin saw that the mighty saber-toothed tiger, Mudaka, was trying to escape, decided to lure him with spring food. Yan Jin handed the saber-toothed tiger delicious and wine, cooked recently, the smell of which came to the Mudaka. Yan Jin said that for the sake of meat and wine, the saber-toothed tiger did not kill him, but spared him. Then the saber-toothed tiger relaxed his vigilance and Yan Jin sent him and decided to attack and escape. Yan Jin grabbed a rope and tried to tie the Mudaka, and then grabbed a huge fish and ran. The Mudaka shouted at Yan Jin not to run away from him. But Yan Jin was not ready to say goodbye to his life yet, and told the saber-toothed tiger about it. When Yan Jin ran up to the cliff, the saber-toothed tiger suddenly asked Yan Jin to stop again. But this time his voice sounded even more threatening. Yan Jin stood at the edge of the cliff and held a huge fish over his head with both hands. Yan Jin asked the saber-toothed tiger if he would believe him if he said he could fly. To this, the tiger replied that Yan Jin should try and jumped right at him. At the moment when the saber-toothed tiger was flying through the air in a jump, Yan Jin had already managed to jump down from the cliff together with the fish. At the edge of the cliff, the tiger stopped and looked down. Yan Jin flew on self-made wings and smiled at his victory. Finally, Yan Jin shouted that the saber-toothed tiger shouldn't have believed him when he said he could fly. When Yan Jin, to the great regret of the saber-toothed tiger, flew away, the Mudaka finally took on a different appearance and turned into a human. She was a young and beautiful girl. She angrily watched Yan Jin run away and thought that next time she would not miss such an opportunity and would definitely catch him. An army of people arrived to the girl on two horned huge animals with three pairs of eyes. The Mudaka gave them all the order to stop, and they stopped. Then the girl threw a rope, similar to a vine, and hooked it on a tree, and then, flying into the air, landed on a branch of this tree with a jump. The girl began to observe some settlement and asked her people what kind of place it was. One of the people replied that it was just a small Yan clan. The girl thought for a while, and then informed everyone that they were going to the Yan clan immediately. Yan Jin finally returned to his Yan clan. He stood and looked up at the sky. At the birds flying by, a discount from a huge fish was lying nearby. Suddenly, a huge rhinoceros with three pairs of eyes approached Yan Jin. Yan Jin carefully examined the animal and wondered where this huge rhinoceros came from here. Then a man with a spear approached Yan Jin and asked why he had returned so late, and then informed him that the clan had very good news. Yan Jin was slightly surprised by such words and did not answer the question he had just been asked. It turns out that today the Hagalu of a large tribe, together with Yan Kai, personally came to hold the awakening ceremony. Then Yan Jin accidentally overheard one of his clan members asking the one who told Yan Jin everything why he did it because Yan Jin is not that old yet. In response, the guy heard that although Yan Jin is only 12 years old, he is still an integral part of the Yan clan, so it would be quite nice to let him watch this ceremony in person. The inhabitants of the clan crowded around the animal, which is called the Great Horned Deer. Everyone was surprised that there really was a Great Horned Deer in front of them. Someone in the crowd said that this was exactly what one would expect from Elder Huey's grandson, Yan Huey. Everyone thought that this time the awakening would still happen. People were confused, because the great horned deer was quite strong. 
Then voices from the crowd were heard again. This time someone said that Yan Hui had been raised by a great elder since childhood, so he could probably even become their Digulu. An Jin stood behind the crowd and thought about what kind of value is in this horned deer, and what is the great strength of this fat guy who caught it. After some time, the grandson of the second elder, Yan Yong, appeared and brought the defeated great horned goat. Everyone crowded around and began to violently discuss what had happened and say that even two or even three people are not able to catch the great horned goat. But everyone understood perfectly well that Yan Yang, the grandson of the second elder, was not nearly inferior in his abilities to the grandson of the first elder Yan Hui. Someone said that perhaps Yan Yang could become even better than Hui, that the clan would be able to rely on him in the future. Then the vice captain of the hunting team, Yan Lun, came up and called Yan Yang and Yan Hui to him. Captain Yan Lung said that Yan Yong and Huey should put on a very good performance, as the awakening ceremony is very important right now. Then Captain Yan Lung added that Big Hagulu had personally sent Hahuku to see. Yan Yong was very surprised after Captain Yan Lung's words and asked if Hahuka would definitely come. The vice captain of the hunting team did not answer Yan Yong's question, but only said that he and Huey should work well and strive for awakening. At this time, Yan Jin was standing behind the captain and heard everything he was saying to Yan Yong and Yan Huey. Suddenly, Yan Long capital sensed Yan Jin's presence behind him and turned around. Yan Jin greeted Uncle Long politely and with a smile on his face. Captain Yan Long walked up to Yan Jin and patted him on the shoulder, and then said that Yan Jin has a very powerful father. He never hunted, but the stone tools he makes are definitely the best. Therefore, Vice Captain Yan Lung advised Yan Jin to watch the awakening ceremony very carefully, because Yan Jin must certainly, according to the others, inherit the great glory of his own father. And Yan Jin himself understood this perfectly well. Suddenly, someone's loud footsteps were heard. Yan Jin and Yan Long looked and saw a giant man with a bulging body, who carried a large stone column on his shoulder. Yan Jin asked what was going on, but Vice Captain Yan Lung did not answer the question he was asked. Then a man with a column on his shoulder walked between them and stuck the pipe into the ground. Yan Jin could only think that this stone pillar must be incredibly heavy. Then the man lifted the column again and put it in place. Yan Jin saw his back, on which some kind of bear was painted. The man with the bear on his back lifted the column again, it soared in the air, and he jumped from the ground onto it. The crowd was shocked, but watched the spectacle with great interest. So the man installed several columns directly into the ground, so that the ground at the beginning of the column flew apart. The crowd started shouting words of support to this man, and he, still standing on one of the stone columns, shouted something about ancestral deities from above and a totem shining forever. And Yan Jin looked at him and wondered if this man was even human. The man asked Yan to bring all the children from the age of 15 and then he would be able to hold the awakening ceremony. The old man replied that it would be a great honor for them that such a great and powerful man, a totem warrior, would hold an awakening ceremony. Yan Jin was surprised when he heard about the totem warrior. Then Yan Jin looked at his hands and thought that the body in which he is now only 12 years old. It looks like he will have to wait another three years to meet the requirements. Yan gathered all the children from the age of 15. The totem warriors started telling them that as they know, they will be able to protect their clan only if they become powerful totem warriors. He said that a clan can be powerful and prosperous only if it has powerful totem warriors. Only the strongest totem warrior can use his powers to fight the darkness. He said that all of them must definitely become great totem warriors. Ian Jin thought about the words of the totem warrior, about the darkness, about the powerful power of the totem. He decided that there are many components, so it's better for him to just observe for now. The totem warrior said that the totem of this Yan clan is fire. The warrior said that he would direct the power of fire at the totem in order to help all these people awaken. If the awakening is successful, according to the totem warrior, special signs should appear on people's bodies. The totem warrior said that he really hopes that among all these people there is at least one person who will be able to awaken. This, according to him, is the only way for them to become totem warriors. After these words, the warrior announced the beginning. People stood in the center of the columns, which were placed in a circle, and the warrior directed the fire. Ian Jin looked at everything that was going on and thought that this totem warrior was probably giving his all and was not even afraid of being burned and dying. The leader of the Yan clan, Yan, stood next to senior elder Yan Lu and second elder Yan Yi, and said that it had been five whole years, but the Yan clan had not yet managed to awaken someone. The second elder, Yan Yi, said that he really hoped that Huey or Yan Yang would succeed. And so it happened. Both Yan Huey and Yan Yang succeeded. Senior elder Yan Lu shouted for everyone to look quickly, 
and that the two had succeeded. He was glad that now, from this very moment, their clan had successors. The leader of the Yan clan was also happy about this event and enthusiastically shouted that he saw everything perfectly. At this time, Yan Jin stood behind everyone and thought that all these people are not materialistic at all, because awakening has absolutely nothing to do with the gods. Unexpectedly for everyone, some incomprehensible strange things flew out of the place where the totem warrior was and went straight to Yan Jin. Yan Jin was scared and covered himself with his hands to protect himself from the blow. There was a flash of bright light, but Yan Jin was not hit. These strange things started swirling around Yan Jin. It turned out that Yan Jin was the third of those who were able to awaken. The head of the Yan clan looked at Yan Jin in surprise and enthusiastically talked about how their clan was finally thriving. And senior elder Yan Lu could not even say anything. One of these strange things passed into Yan Jin's body, and he stood in shock and did not understand what was happening at all. The totem warrior frowned at Yan Jin and said that he had never seen such a light of fire before. He asked Yan Jin to release his flame and let him look at it. But Yan Jin did not understand what was wrong and whether it was some kind of problem. Yan Jin then asked what it meant to release his flame and how he could do it. The totem warrior looked towards the others, those who were able to awaken, and said that Yan Jin should just do the same thing they do. He should control the forces of the totem and then be able to release his flame. Yan Jin scratched his head and said he didn't know how to do it. Then an elder intervened in the conversation and told the totem warrior that Yan Jin was only a 12-year-old child. He had not yet reached the age necessary for awakening, so he could not do anything that the totem warrior required of him now. After that, the head of the Yan clan turned to Yan Jin and told him that he just needed to close his eyes and clear his mind. The head of the clan said that Yan Jin had just released the flame and he should try to do it again. Then he would definitely succeed. Yan Jin agreed to try. He concentrated, closed his eyes, and tried to clear his mind. Then Yan Jin opened his eyes, but found himself in a place completely unfamiliar to him before. He heard a strange sound, but could not figure out what kind of sound it was and where it was coming from. Yan Jin then looked around and saw a huge black hole. Yan Jin seemed to be sucked into this huge black hole and, after some time, he finally came to his senses and opened his eyes in the real world. The totem warrior asked him if he could feel the flames. Yan Jin replied that he didn't feel anything. Then the head of the Yan clan intervened and grabbed Yan Jin by the collar, began to shout that this simply could not be, because they saw everything perfectly with their own eyes. But Yan Jin still insisted that he didn't feel anything at all. When the head of the Yan clan finally released Yan Jin, the totem warrior asked if Yan Jin had definitely felt absolutely nothing unusual, no flame, or some other totem. Then Yan Jin asked if it was considered that he had seen a black hole, and the totem warrior asked him what a black hole was. The totem warrior asked Yan Jing what a black hole was. Yan Jin tried to explain as clearly as possible that a black hole is something that can absorb anything. Yan Yang looked at Yan Jin with a frowning face and asked what other black hole he was talking about. He asked for sure if Yan Jin felt something and expressed his doubts that Yan Jin was able to wake up at all. Yan Hui, who was standing behind Yan Yang, said that it was probably true, Yan Jin did not wake up, and everything that happened recently probably happened just by accident. Then other people who were standing nearby and heard the whole conversation also expressed their doubts about Yan Jin's awakening. Some of the people said that they had never heard of blue flame before, so Yan Jin's awakening raises some doubts. Another person from the crowd said that Yan Jin is only a 12-year-old child, he is still too young to wake up. Then another person replied to their words that it could well be a divine gift from the gods. Senior elder Yan Lu turned to the head of the clan and said that the flame on Yan Jin's body was very strange and asked Agula if it could somehow relate to the darkness. Then the second elder, Yan Yi, intervened and said that Yan Jin was talking about some kind of black hole. Therefore, according to Yan Yi, Yan Jin is definitely somehow connected with darkness. Then the head of the Yan clan turned to Hu Huka, the totem warrior, and said that they were very ignorant and asked him to guide them on the true path of enlightenment. Hu Huka furrowed his face angrily and said that he had never been in such a situation before in his entire life, but if it had anything to do with the darkness, then they would have to take action. Yan Jin, who heard their every word, again began to assure everyone that he had seen absolutely nothing and there was no black hole at all, and that they could believe him if they wanted, or they might not believe him. Then Yan Jin said that it was time for him to go and was about to leave, but Hu Huka ordered him to stand still and, swinging at Yan Jin with his hand, jumped up to him and wanted to hit him. But suddenly someone ordered Hu Huka to stop, and he did not have time to hit Yan Jin. His hand froze right next to his face. Everyone turned to the voice and saw the saber-toothed tiger. It was the same Mudaka that Yan Jin had already met before. 
The saber-toothed tiger was slowly heading towards the crowd. Ian Jin looked at the Mudaka in surprise and couldn't understand why this saber-toothed tiger looked so familiar. When the Mudaka took the form of a human and turned into a girl, Yan Jin shouted that it was probably a demon and jumped right on the totem warrior. This girl was a Mudaka of the King Man tribe, King. She came closer to Yan Jin, who was still afraid of her, and said that they had finally met again. At this time, an old sorcerer who was sitting on the mountain was watching everything that was happening. Along with him was a young guy, his disciple, who was surprised that Yan Jin's fire first appeared and then disappeared again. The old sorcerer said that this invisible fire is like an uncaught fish or an unattainable land. Then the old man said that the prophecy about the chosen man was finally beginning to come true. The guy who was standing nearby asked how it could be possible that the chosen one is really in this small and remote Yan tribe. The old sorcerer did not answer him, but only stood up and said that they definitely had to go right now. He opened the portal and they both entered it. The Mudaka stood in front of Yan Jin and looked at him carefully. Then the totem warrior said that Yan Jin is a very strange child and asked the Mudaka to rid them of Yan Jin. The girl said that she could see for herself that he was a rather strange child. Then the girl came even closer to Yan Jin and asked what his name was. Yan Jin introduced himself and then the girl asked if he knew who she was. Yan Jin replied that he knew she was a mighty Mudaka. The girl looked at him with an angry face and asked if he knew who she was, then why couldn't he guess what she was going to do to him? Yan Jin recoiled from the girl in fear, and then said that he was not quite sure what the mighty Mudaka would do to him but he was very afraid that he would not be able to avenge Grandfather Aluba. The girl asked who Grandfather Alubu was. The head of the Yan clan and the senior elder Yan Lu also did not know who Grandfather Alubu was, but they knew for sure that this person was not from their clan. Then Yan Jin decided to tell everyone about who this Grandfather Alubu was. Yan Jin said that Grandpa Alubu is a very kind-hearted person who lives in the mountains. Yan Jin also told about how he once went to the mountains and during a dangerous situation it was Grandfather Alubu who saved his life. Among other things, Yan Jin said that after all this, Grandpa Alubu still treats him well. Whenever they met, Grandpa Alubu would tell him about some of the animals that he had hunted very hard to hunt with Yan Jin. Then Yan Jin added that about a month ago Grandfather Alubu saved a white tiger, for his sake he went hunting every day, regardless of what the weather was outside. The girl looked at Yan Jin with surprise and listened attentively to Yan Jin's story along with everyone else. Yan Jin continued to speak, and said that this disgusting tiger, as it turned out, not only did not have the slightest sense of gratitude, in fact, on the day when the tiger recovered and came to his senses, he ate Grandpa Aluba. But apparently the elders did not see this as a problem at all. Second elder Yan Yi told the head of the Yan clan that Grandfather Alubu was apparently a very noble man, and it was probably the fault of the Yan clan. But the head of the Yan clan just laughed and said with a frown that he was a good person. Then senior elder Yan Lu added that they were very sorry, but the expression on his face spoke of complete indifference to the fate of Grandfather Alubu. Yan Jin continued to tell how two days ago he went to look for Grandpa Aluba, but found only his skeleton and traces of the beast that killed Grandpa Aluba. Then Yan Jin clenched his hand into a fist and said that after that he swore that he would avenge Grandfather Aluba and kill this bloodthirsty white tiger. The head of the Yan clan said that it was right and Yan Jin really should take revenge on the beast for the death of Grandfather Alubu. And senior elder Yan Lu added that the head of the Yan clan was really right about this, and Yan Jin should avenge Grandfather Alubu. The girl looked first at the head of the Yan clan and at the senior elder Yan Lu, and then turned her gaze to Yan Jin and asked if the reason he attacked her was because he was trying to avenge the death of Grandfather Alubu. The elder was shocked by what he heard and wondered how it was possible that Yan Jin really attacked the great Mudaka. Senior elder Yan Lu was also shocked by his words to the Mudaka. Then the head of the Yan clan fell to his knees and said that their clan was doomed because Yan Jin attacked the great Mudaka. One of the people in the crowd said that he could never have imagined that this child would attack the great Mudaka. Another person replied that the punishment for attacking the great Mudaka is death, but not only Yan Jin will die, but the entire Yan clan will be destroyed along with him. Yan Jin looked at the great Mudaka and said that he was very sorry that he had made such an unforgivable mistake and attacked the Mudaka, because the whole point is that she looks very similar to the tiger that is responsible for the death of Grandpa Alubu. In addition, Yan Jin said that he considers himself a hero, and therefore will not make excuses for his actions. But first he had one small request to the Mudaka. Yan Jin asked the girl to pardon his clan. Someone from the crowd called Yan Jin a real hero. The second elder Yan Yi stood behind the head of the clan and with tears in his eyes said that this child seemed to have really grown up. The elder elder added that he could never have imagined that Yan Jin could be so brave 
and courageous at such a young age. Then the Mudaka thought that she might be considered bad if she punished everyone who was considered a hero. The girl said that it was all just wonderful and she was very proud of the Yan clan, as it has such heroes as Yan Jin. Yan Jin looked at the girl with undisguised surprise. But Yan Jin was just laughing in his heart. He just wanted to give everything at face value. So now he will have to continue playing this game. The head of the Yan clan breathed a sigh of relief. The Mudaka said that not only would she not punish Yan Jin, but she would also give him a reward. He would go through the eternal Dalu ceremony. Yan Jin asked what the Dalu ceremony was. Everyone in the crowd was very surprised and whispered about something and the head of the clan enthusiastically shouted that the Mudaka wanted a member of their clan, Yan Jin, to join the eternal Dalu ceremony. Everyone started admiring the girl and shouting her name. Then the girl raised both hands to the sky and said that she, King, the daughter of the great Hagalu of the Kingman tribe, bestows, in the name of the Mudaka, grants Yan Jin of the Yan clan the eternal Dalu ceremony, and may the ancestors bless this hero with their protection. People from the crowd came up to Yan Jin and picked him up in their arms, and then started throwing him in the air, and saying that this is a good job and he is a real hero. But Yan Jin was clearly not enthusiastic about such actions. He asked them why they were doing it. The head of the Yan clan at this moment asked the girl what level the Dalu ceremony should be. Then the head of the Yan clan approached Yan Jin, when he was already released, and said that the Dalu ceremony was a great honor for him and their clan had never had a hero Dalu before. The head of the clan told Yan Jin to immediately kneel down and thank the Mudaka. But the girl said that there was absolutely no need for this, because Yan Jin honestly deserved it. She asked the head of the Yan clan to prepare everything necessary for the test. Yan Jin was a little surprised when he heard about the test. And the head of the clan put his hands on his shoulders and said that the ceremony of the Mudaka is the highest honor of the gift of the Mudaka. And after Yan Jin passes the test of life and death, he can become a real hero of Dalu. Yan Jin thought about the trial of life and death and turned back to look at the girl. When Yan Jin saw the smirk on her face, he immediately realized that this girl had deliberately framed him. Yan Jin had to pass a very difficult test of life and death. He went to the water, there were a lot of sharks swimming there. Yan Jin looked down with serious intent. Yan Jin was well aware that it was very dangerous and was in a state of panic. He watched other people rejoice and did not understand why they were so happy. When Yan Jin was wearing a suit, he cursed the Mudaka king in his mind, because he understood perfectly well that she wanted him to become a hero of Dalu, but for this he would have to pass the test of life and death. Yan Jin believed that such a reward could be death for him. Yan Jin stood and asked if it was too late for him to give up. The girl, King, asked what it meant to give up. Then Yan Jin chuckled and said that this means giving up on becoming a hero of Dalu and remaining just an ordinary hero. In his opinion, this is also a pretty good option. But one of the clan members, Yan Jin's uncle, put his hand on Yan Jin's shoulder and told him to stop talking such nonsense, because the Dalu ceremony is definitely a gift that the Mudaka personally presented to him. It's a great honor for him. Senior Elder Yan Lu added that it was right and that there was no place for weaklings in their clan. There was only a place for heroes. Second Elder Yan Yi tried to calm down Senior Elder Yan Lu and told him to listen to what Yan Jin was saying first. Then the man again told Yan Jin to look into the eyes of every member of their Yan clan. He said that everyone dreams of being in Yan Jin's place and going through the Dalu ceremony, and none of them is afraid for their lives at all. He then added that if Yan Jin refused to pass the life and death test, he would offend the great Mudaka with such an act and ruin the reputation of the Yan clan forever. He said that even if Yan Jin had spared the Mudaka, Grandpa Agalu would never have done it. The uncle said he understood perfectly well that it was all because Yan Jin was probably worried about his father. Then he hugged Yan Jin with one arm and shouted that at the life and death trial ceremony, the sacrifice was a great honor for the hero, and that he was completely confident that Yan Jin's father would be proud of him. The head of the Yan clan also encouraged Yan Jin and said that he should just do it, and the clan would definitely take care of his father and told all the people of the clan to cheer for their hero. All the people began to shout in delight. The Mudaka said it was time to start and everyone should get ready for the Dalu ceremony. Pieces of raw meat began to be thrown into the water where there was a bunch of predatory sharks, and they all quickly swam up to him, and some even managed to grab a piece of raw meat right in the air. The Mudaka looked at Yan Jin and said that he just needed to catch one Lulu fish, which should not be difficult for a hero like Yan Jin. Everyone in the crowd shouted that the Mudaka was right in what he was saying. Yan Jin asked why the trial of life and death that he was told about was just fishing. The Mudaka replied that this slave Lulu is the king of this river, and only the one who can catch her can become a real hero of Dalu. 
Han Jin smiled and said that this trial of life and death is too simple. The Mudaka said that if it seems simple to him, then he can start. The head of the clan said to start the ceremony. People grabbed Yan Jin by the arm and carried him. Before even Yan Jin had time to recover, he was suddenly thrown into this water to the sharks of Lu Lu. Yan Jin opened his eyes underwater and saw a huge shark approaching him with its mouth open. Yan Jin surfaced and started asking to be rescued and pulled out of the water. The head of the Yan clan ordered one of his men to help Yan Jin. The man went to the water and threw a bat there. Yan Kin caught it and then asked why he needed this bat. When a shark swam up to him, Yan Jin hit it on the jaw with a bat with all his might and got out of the water. But the warriors immediately approached Yan Jin and blocked his way. Yan Jin asked them what they were doing now and why they were not letting him pass. They repeated that in the Yan clan there is only a place for heroes and there is no place for weaklings. Senior elder Yan Lu pointed his finger at Yan Jin and told him to immediately go back and accept the Dalu ceremony bestowed on him by the Mudaka. Then Yan Jin told Elder Lu that he was not going to retreat at all, but in order to catch Lu Lu's fish, he just needed a weapon. Then senior elder Yan Lu looked at Yan Jin in incomprehension and said that they had already given him a weapon, a wooden bat. Yan Jin replied that he was, of course, a hero and all that, but he still needed a real weapon, otherwise he would not be able to reveal his real talent. The head of the Yan clan asked the Mudaka if it was worth giving Yan Jin some kind of weapon, to which the girl gave full consent. Yan Jin thanked the girl and said that he would immediately run for the weapon himself and ran. The senior elder turned to the head of the Yan clan and asked how they could just let Yan Jin go for weapons himself, because he could just run away from here, and then he didn't know what they would do in this situation. Second elder Yan Lu replied that if Yan Jin really decides to run away, and the Mudaka charges them, then their clan will be in great danger. The head of the Yan clan thought for a while. After some time, a totem warrior came up to them and told the Mudaka that Yan Jin probably ran away, since he had been nowhere for a long time. But the girl said that Yan Jin would not dare to do something like that, and just at that very moment Yan Jin appeared, immediately apologizing for the long wait. Yan Jin brought a very long rope with him. The people from the clan looked and wondered that he would need such a huge rope. They decided that he thought that such a rope would help him survive. Yan Yang thought that Yan Jin was really making a lifeline, and Huey said that Yan Jin was just a real coward and such things just insulted the whole Dalu ceremony. The totem warrior asked the Mudaka what Yan Jin was doing. The girl replied that they should wait a little and just watch it and soon they would find out everything. Yan Jin finally finished doing what he was doing and threw the hook with a piece of meat into the water. There was a slightly malicious grin on his face. Lu Lu's fish grabbed the bait and Yan Jin pulled. Everyone watched this scene with undisguised surprise. Yan Jin pulled the fish to the ground and said he had caught it. The Mudaka was as surprised as the others and asked how Yan Jin managed to do something like that. Yan Jin asked if she had ever heard of fishing. The girl asked what fishing was. Yan Jin explained that the hooks he used were made from the bones of the great horned deer. They are very hard, so the Lu Lu fish cannot bite through them. Yan Jin said that since Lu Lu's fish really likes meat, he just had to throw a piece of raw meat into the water and the fish naturally swam to the bait, tried to eat the meat, but got hooked. At this moment, all that had to be done was to get the Lu Lu fish out of the water. Then the girl asked in surprise how she hadn't thought of it before. Then the girl thought that if you use a similar method, then absolutely anyone will be able to catch a Lulu fish. Suddenly Yan Yang shouted that it was wrong and it was a scam, and Huey agreed with him and added that such a tool only disgraces the Dalu ceremony. Someone from the crowd said that this should be taken into account, even though Yan Jin caught Lu Lu's fish. Another person from the crowd said that he completely agreed with Zion Huey, because this is a Dalu ceremony, and the use of such things is unacceptable. But another person said that he considers it quite normal and also believes that passing the test of life and death can be counted. Then the head of the Yan clan told everyone to shut up immediately and asked what the Mudaka thought about it. Then the head of the Yan clan looked at Yan Jin and said that he was still a small 12-year-old child. Then the girl asked Yan Jin if it was possible to use this method to catch some other fish besides Lulu fish. Yan Jin told her that if you know what the fish eats, it's enough to simply adjust the size of the hook. And besides, Yan Jin added that he still caught the fish that he was told to catch. The girl briefly thought about the fact that the tribe has a shortage of food in the winter season, since all the animals are hiding. So if you use a similar method for fishing, the problem with food may be completely solved. 
The girl took the rope and decided to try it too. She looked at Yan Jin and asked if she only needed to throw this rope into the water or if she should do something else. The girl threw the rope into the water, but nothing happened, she was a little upset. But Yan Jin told her to wait quite a bit. She looked at Yan Jin and asked if Lulu's fish should not come to her by itself. Yan Jin again, but in a rougher tone, told the girl to just wait a bit. The girl frowned and asked how long she still had to wait. Then Yan Jin shouted to her to pull the rope quickly. The girl was dragging her feet, and Yan Jin was telling her to stall for time as soon as possible. Finally, after much effort, the girl finally pulled the Lu Lu fish out of the water. The head of the Yan clan stood and looked at all this in incomprehension, and the totem warrior stood next to him and also could not understand anything. The girl was jubilant and shouted that it was just some kind of madness. She was glad that she could do it, was able to catch the kingfish Lulu. Yan Jin congratulated the girl on catching such a special fish. At this time, the old man from the mountain and his man were still watching everything from afar. The old man said that this was exactly the place and that the prediction had finally begun to come true since the elusive fish had been caught. The crowd stood and looked at the huge kingfish Lulu lying on the ground. Yan Jin asked if the fish King Lulu really looks like this, because it seems that he had already seen a similar fish somewhere before. When they decided to set fire to this fish, Yan Jin was surprised that this fish was not afraid of fire at all. The totem warrior confirmed that it was a Lulu fish, since it was not afraid of fire at all and told the Mudaka about it. The girl said that this is very good, since the search for monsters is a very important step in the fight for the land of prophecy, so it looks like their Kingman tribe is already leading. The totem warrior asked what the Mudaka meant. The girl said that this is the same prophecy, defeat the monsters and enter the land of prophecy. The totem warrior said that no one had ever fulfilled this prophecy before, apparently something has changed now. Suddenly, a voice was heard saying that the prophecy had finally begun to come true. The totem warrior asked who had come. Everyone began to fearfully expect what would happen now and told the old man not to approach. It was the old man from the mountain who came. Then the old man suppressed the warriors with his strength, and everyone immediately realized that he was a sorcerer. The Mudaka was surprised that the sorcerer's power was so overwhelming. The totem warrior was preparing to attack and told the Mudaka to be careful. But the sorcerer suppressed his strength, and the totem warrior could not even move. The Mudaka ordered everyone to stop immediately and said that the Mudaka from the King tribe greets the highly esteemed Daluma. Everyone was surprised that it really was Lord Dalumu. Yan Jin thought that this Dalumu was so powerful that even the Mudaka herself should bow to him. Everyone in the clan bowed before the great Dalumu. Yan Jin looked at the old man's shoulder. There was an oracle hieroglyph on his shoulder on his suit, and this caused confusion in Yan Jin. Yan Jin thought that this old man was probably a real sorcerer. The Mudaka asked the old man what brought Vladika Daluma himself here. Dalumu looked at the fish he caught and said that it was pretty good to catch such a fish. Then he said that he had come here to give them all a chance. Mudaka asked what chance. Dalumu said he decided to give them a chance to take part in the trial of mountains and seas. The clan members were seriously surprised by this. Then Yan Jin remembered about this trial of mountains and seas and remembered that this fish Lulu is exactly a demon from the catalog of mountains and seas, Xi-11 fish, the description for it is exactly the same. Yan Jin also realized that the symbol on the sorcerer's shoulder is a legendary symbol of the Catalog of Mountains and Seas. He wondered if the Catalog of Mountains and Seas could have existed long before civilization. The Mudaka said that by doing this the old man would spend part of his life. But the old sorcerer replied that he had already lived long enough, and it did not matter at all whether he would live a few more years or not. He said that this was his main task. Then the sorcerer began to conjure and the hieroglyphs of the oracle appeared everywhere. Yan Jin was surprised by such power, and the head of the Yan clan asked the Almighty to bless the clan. Yan Jin realized that this power was the power of darkness. Yan Jin remembered that when he first came to this world, he was met by darkness. He becomes disgusted even if he just thinks about it. And, although Yan Jin was not sure what was hiding behind this darkness, he knew for sure that there was nothing good so clearly. The only safe place is where totems shine. Because the power of totem warriors comes from totems and, in fairness, the fight against darkness is the responsibility of each of them. But Yan Jin could not understand why everyone worships this sorcerer, who is surrounded by darkness. Because when Yan Jin only mentioned darkness, he was almost killed. The old sorcerer continued to conjure and probably he was already ill, and he could not stand it. His man wanted to help the master, but the old sorcerer said that he was alright. 
Then the old man said that all the heroes who are already 18 and younger can participate in the trial of mountains and seas. Everyone who successfully passes the test will receive a new totem pillar. Then the senior elder asked the head of the Yan clan if he had heard what the old sorcerer had just said and added that they had to pass the test of the mountains and seas in order to get a new totem pillar. The head of the Yan clan said that he himself understands this very well. The second elder added that this is a very good opportunity, and if everything succeeds, then their clan will have as many as two totems, which will significantly increase their power. The old sorcerer said it was a huge chance to fight for glory and for the clan and told them to fight. Then everyone started cheering and Yan Jin thought that these cavemen were really very scary. Then the old man said that the children who want to join can do it now. Then the Mudaka of the King tribe said she wanted to join. She transformed into the form of a saber-toothed tiger and jumped into the portal. The old sorcerer thought that this junior is in Mudaka, so she's really special. Someone from the crowd shouted that no hero from the Yanni clan is afraid of death, and they decided to follow the Mudaka. The old sorcerer said that this trial of the mountains and seas is very dangerous and those who go to it will be responsible for their own lives. Huey said he would go anyway, and Yan Yang also decided to go to the test of the mountains and seas. All the heroes of the Yan clan were walking forward for their clan, and Yan Jin was standing behind the whole crowd and did not know what to do. Then Yan Jin decided that he could not compare with all of them and should just run away, but he was stopped. It was Uncle Long. Uncle Long asked why Yan Jin did not go to the test of the mountains and seas. Yan Jin said that Dalumu said it was a purely voluntary action. Then Uncle Long said that Yan Jin is the hero of Dalu. Even though the Mudaka has not yet given him this title, he is still the only one of the entire clan who participated in the Dalu ceremony. Uncle Long put his hands on Yan Jin's shoulders and told him not to worry, because even if he dies, he will still be honored by descendants. Uncle Long pointed Yan Jin to the portal and told him to enter this portal and pass the test of the mountains and seas. Yan Jin tried to persuade Uncle Long, but it was absolutely useless because his decision had already been made and it was impossible to argue. Huey said that Yan Jin was showing off again and that he didn't look like a hero at all. Yan Yang said that it was true, because even at the Dalu ceremony, Yan Jin used his strange tools and thus simply insulted the Dalu ceremony. Then Yan Hui and Yan Yang exchanged glances and approached Yan Jin, grabbed him and told him to go with them, before asking Uncle Long for forgiveness. The old sorcerer thought about the invisible fire, and the elusive caught fish, and about who would still be chosen in ten years, and who would save everyone. Yan Jin crossed through the portal and asked what kind of place it was. When Yan Jin looked around, it seemed very familiar to him. Yan Jin thought that this was the same place he had been before. Yan Yang said that it is darkness and they are now inside the darkness. Yan Hui asked what they should do at all, because they had only recently awakened their flames, so going against the darkness would clearly be a futile undertaking. Yan Yang said that Yan Hui should not be afraid of anything, because as long as they all stick together, everything will definitely be fine. Huey said that this is how it should be, because this is just a test of mountains and seas, and not real darkness. Yan Jin stood and thought about the trial of the mountains and seas and about the darkness. Suddenly, the voice of an old sorcerer was heard saying that King had already passed the first test. Everyone looked at each other in disbelief. Yan Jin immediately recognized the voice of the old sorcerer, and wondered how King managed to cope with the first test so quickly. None of those present could believe that she had coped with the first test so quickly. Suddenly Yan Jin shouted that it was time to attack and rushed to run somewhere. Yan Jin turned to the others and said that they were heroes, the pride of the Yan clan, and it didn't matter what they had to fight and what darkness they had to go through, they simply had to always win. Yan Yang looked at Yan Hui and the two of them just stood there in silence for a while, and then rushed to run after Yan Jin. Yan Jin thought that since King completed the first task so quickly, it probably wasn't as difficult as it might seem, so even if there are some monsters here, they can be defeated. Suddenly, Yan Jin began to notice that those who had recently been running behind him began to overtake him and he found himself at the very end. Then Yan Jin shouted that all these people who are already 18 years old are just mocking him, who is only 12. Yan Jin couldn't run anymore, he stopped near a tree and thought that the physical fitness of all these people was too high, and his weak body couldn't keep up with them at all. Suddenly Yan Jin saw a cloud of dust, and then the heroes running back to him, who shouted for him to run as soon as possible. Then someone quickly scattered all the heroes in different directions, and Yan Jin stood and still could not understand anything. At that moment, the one everyone called a monster appeared right in front of his eyes. It was a huge monster and Yan Jin was even scared. 
and Jin stood in a stupor and could even move. Right in front of him was a huge purple monster with huge teeth and a bunch of spikes on its body. At that moment, Yan Jin was very happy that he was running behind everyone else and promised himself that he would never follow these cavemen again. At this time, the monster attacked another hero, and Yan Jin managed to run away to the side. Then Yan Jin, along with other heroes, rushed to escape from the monster. When Yan Jin turned around to look at the monster, there were already two of them. Yan Jin didn't understand what kind of world it was in general and why there were suddenly two monsters. One of the heroes noticed a narrow gap in the mountain nearby and called everyone to run there. Suddenly there were three monsters, Yan Jin was well aware that one monster was too strong for them. But Yan Jin knew that since King had passed the first test, it meant she had met these monsters. Then Yan Jin noticed a wound on the body of one of the monsters and realized that he was right. These were claw marks and were probably left by King when she was in the guise of a saber-toothed tiger. Suddenly Yan Yang suggested that everyone split into four groups. Two groups were to distract the monsters, and the third was to follow him and Yan Hui. Yan Yang said that just recently, two of them had awakened their powers, so they should be able to kill at least one of these scary monsters. Yan Yang said that everyone should listen to his order. Yan Jin looked at the guys with some disbelief, and then their faces lit up with fire, and Yan Jin was very surprised. It reminded him of the Ghost Rider. Yan Yang ordered everyone to go on the attack. Yan Yang watched with admiration as Yan Yang with a fiery face and hands, together with Yan Hui, went on the attack right at the monsters. The whole crowd rushed out of the cave to fight monsters. One guy who couldn't even get up, crawled on the ground after everyone and asked Yan Jin to help him get up faster, assuring him that he was still able to fight. Yan Jin stood aside and did nothing. Another guy, who was probably also injured, took this guy by the arm, and they went into battle together for the glory of the Yan clan. Yan Jin didn't understand why they were doing this and only thought that cavemen were really very strange. Yan Jin also came out of the cave and looked around. His group was fighting two unharmed monsters, and the two guys who had awakened, Yan Yang and Yan Hui, were fighting one monster on the side. Yan Jin watched everything happening from the sidelines and did not know what to do, because his team was clearly losing in this unequal battle. Suddenly Yan Yang and Yan Hui attacked one monster and told the others to attack. They asked for this monster with a huge log pointed from one edge and pierced it through. The monster screamed loudly in pain. Yan Yang was very happy that he had already dealt with one monster and said that now they need to kill the other two. But Yan Hui shouted that all this was absolutely useless and that another monster had appeared. Now there were three of them again. The monster they killed split into two, and Yan Yang said that the more they fight with these monsters, the more they become. The other team's number of monsters also increased, which was not very good for everyone. Yan Yang got angry and shouted that he just couldn't believe that they wouldn't be able to defeat all these terrible monsters. Yan Jin was still watching from the sidelines and did not interfere in the battle in any way. He only thought that the fact that these monsters were increasing was beyond any comprehension. A huge number of monsters surrounded the heroes of the Yan clan. One monster attacked Yan Hui, the other attacked Yan Yang. They were lying on the ground, many of them could no longer fight, but someone else held a spear firmly in their hands. Yan Jin said that such a phenomenon is beyond the limits of science, although he had heard of paradomy. The creatures in this case should not be exactly the same. Then Yan Jin added that such a thing does not go with energy conservation at all, and these words made him seriously think about energy conservation. Suddenly Yan Jin rushed to run somewhere. Yan Hui said that he knew perfectly well from the very beginning that Yan Jin was a real coward and would run away as soon as a good opportunity presented itself. Then Yan Yang told Yan Hui not to worry about Yan Jing, because they themselves and without his help will be able to cope perfectly with these monsters. But Yan Jin actually realized one thing, that the two monsters, when forked, became equal in strength to the most ordinary warrior. Now Yan Jin knew that after the separation, the strength of the monsters is also divided between them and they become much weaker than they were, which meant that if they were divided again, their strength would be weaker even than that of a puppy. At this time, the fight continued and Yan Hui asked Yan Yang what they would do now. Yan Yang replied that since they were the real heroes, they simply could not retreat, they had to win this battle. Yan Yang was ready to do anything for the sake of the clan and was about to attack the monster when he suddenly saw Yan Jin trying to do something and Yan Yang asked Yan Hui what Yan Yang was trying to do. Yan Jin said something about the lever principle, but it seems that no one understood what he was talking about, so their faces didn't look very pretty. Yan Yang turned to Yan Jin and said that if they attacked, the number of monsters would increase and that a person who had never participated in battles would not be able to understand it. 
but Yan Yang said that you need to look much higher and see further. Yan Jin told everyone to be careful, as it would probably rain soon. And Yan Jin started rolling a huge number of stone balls down the mountain, which rolled straight at the monsters. One of the men said there was no room left to defend themselves this time, so they just had to give their lives. Yan Jin jumped up and then turned, but then Yan Jin saw this monster right in front of him and thought that a real hero bravely faces danger, and battle is the fate of a hero. When the monster approached one of the heroes, the guy screamed and threw his bat. Suddenly, Yan Jin managed to grab that spiked bat and attack the monster. The guy behind was happily shouting that it was his bat, and Yan Yong was seriously surprised by the appearance of Yan Jin. Meanwhile, the monster was becoming more aggressive and Yan Jin could no longer fight with him alone, so he shouted to others to join him. The monster growled menacingly, but Yan Jin sent him along with his growl and hit him again several times with a spiked bat. Yan Hui asked how this was even possible, and Yan Yang was shocked that Yan Jin had suddenly become so strong. The crowd of heroes stood and watched Yan Jin fight the monster. Finally, the entire wounded monster was completely defeated and Yan Jin stood with a solemn face looking at his victim. Yan Jin said that he would leave this monster for other heroes, and he went to deal with other monsters. Two monsters stood in front of the crowd and looked at the heroes of the Yan clan, and the heroes looked at them. Everything turned out exactly as Yan Kin had assumed, the last generation was the weakest, but the first was quite strong. Yan Jin met the monster of the last generation and looked at his victim with a smile on his face. Then Yan Jin just decided to drive away this monster and the monster ran away. The voice made an announcement again, this time it was that Yan Jin of the Yan clan had passed the first test. Yan Yang asked with discontent and incomprehension what was going on here at all, and Yan Hui said not to ask him, since he was very tired and all he wanted now was to rest. But there was still a huge monster in front of them, someone shouted loudly. At this time, Mudaka King was already undergoing the second test. She was standing, and there were some strange stone statues around her. In the center was a stone statue of a man sitting on a throne. The girl changed her appearance and turned from a man into a saber-toothed tiger. She rushed to the statue, but as soon as she began to move, traps reacted and huge stones flew into her. But the white saber-toothed tiger kept running. Yan Jin landed and fell straight to the ground so that a cloud of dust appeared. Yan Jin didn't quite understand where he was, but it seems this place was the entrance to the clan. Yan Jin saw the stone figures and king standing among them. Yan Jin was very happy to meet the girl and with an enthusiastic smile on his face rushed to run to her. The girl heard him and turned around and looked at Yan Jin with a menacing look. Yan Jin thought that since King still hadn't passed this test, it meant that it was very difficult. The old sorcerer was watching everything that was happening at that time. His disciple told him that after the master received the fragments of mountains and seas, no one had yet passed the second stage. King is the strongest of all the participants in the test, so the disciple asked if it was worth giving her some hint. The old man was still thinking about the chosen one and about the fact that ten whole years had passed. King was still trying to pass the test, but when killing one stone statue, another new one would appear. Then the girl said that she would kill ten of them and then see if at least one of them could be reborn. The girl started using some kind of magic, and Yan Jin didn't understand what she was doing now. The girl used the king sorcerer's secret technique, shield blood vines and aimed a blow at the statues. The girl was fighting a hard battle with the statues, some of them were on horseback. They attacked the girl in response. King bound some of them with vines, their arms, legs and even heads fell off, but they were reborn again and collected in parts. King didn't know what to do now. Then King closed her eyes and tried to concentrate. She realized that according to the grand scheme, all the soldiers are now ready to attack her, but there is only one of them who does not move. It was the man who sat on the throne. Yan Jin opened her eyes and looked at him carefully. Yan Jin at this time was still standing behind the girl and watching all her actions from the side. The guy carefully examined the site where there were stone statues of soldiers and concluded that he had already seen a similar site somewhere before. Suddenly Yan Jin saw that the girl was trying to kill the stone soldiers again. She used a thorn blood vine, a single dragon spear, and headed straight at the soldiers. She hit them from above and they began to fall apart into many pieces again. Soldiers on horseback were also attacked by her. Then the girl looked at the man who was sitting on the throne. He was guarded by two more stone warriors with swords. Yan Jin did not hide his surprise. He admired how strong and smart King was. The girl again took the form of a saber-toothed tiger and rushed forward. When King took off the head of the stone man who was sitting on the throne, everyone heard the voice of the old sorcerer again. King has passed the second stage. Yan Jin looked at it all with a smile. 
The old sorcerer and his disciple were still watching everything that was happening at the trial of the mountains and seas. The sorcerer's disciple said that this was simply excellent news. After ten whole years someone managed to pass this test. The disciple turned to the old sorcerer and said that this girl, King, was definitely the most chosen one they were looking for. The old sorcerer thought for a while, and then said that the student should not rush to such conclusions, because there is still a third stage that has not been passed. The disciple asked if the old sorcerer thought that King would not be able to pass the third stage. The old sorcerer said that no one has been able to pass the third stage for more than 10 years, so King is definitely talented, but it's possible that it's not her. Then the disciple told the master that the child named Yan Jin was the only one of the students, except King, who was able to pass the first stage and move on to the second. The old sorcerer said that Yan Jin, a child of the Yan clan, the disciple asked the master why he didn't just let Yan Jin go home, because he had only passed the first stage and it was possible that luck would no longer be on his side in the next trials. Then the old sorcerer replied that sometimes luck can become a force and since Yan Jin has already reached the second stage, they simply have to let him go on and pass the tests. The student agreed with the old teacher. It's time for Yan Jin to pass the second test. Yang Jin stood and carefully considered his next actions. Yan Jin realized that as long as he stood in the middle and did not step over the lines, the monsters on both sides did not move. When Yan Jin took one step forward, a stone knight with a spear and on a horse immediately headed towards him. Yan Jin screamed that he was going to die, but managed to duck and the rider jumped over him. On the other hand, the warrior wanted to attack Yan Jin again, and Yan Jin screamed again. Then Yan Jin just abruptly sat down and stopped making even the slightest movements. He just looked around and studied the current situation in which he found himself now. Then Yan Jin began to think about everything, because it seemed to him that all this was already familiar to him. Yan Jin remembered that the horse moves straight and then diagonally, and the elephant moves twice diagonally. And at that moment, it dawned on Yan Jin that this whole order, it could well be the most ordinary chessboard. Yan Jin was still sitting with his eyes closed in the center of the stone figures. The old sorcerer and his disciple were still watching the passage of Yan Jin. The disciple said that this child has been in the second stage for quite a long time. But he did not budge. He asked what Yan Jin was going to do. The old man sat thoughtfully and was silent, and then asked what was wrong with King. The student said that she had already reached the third stage and was still sitting and not moving from her place. He said that she just needed to restore her magic power which she had used up in the second stage. The old sorcerer said that it was very good that she was young and in no hurry. Then the old man said that they should still wait for Yan Jin and see what he would do next. Yan King sat and thought that chess should be a game for two. The king on the opposite side means that the goal should be the king. But there is no king on one side. Yan Jin exclaimed that he finally understood everything. Suddenly, he was almost hit by one warrior with a sledgehammer, but fortunately Yan Jin managed to jump aside in time. Yan Jin shouted that he would try his best, and then told the statue with the sledgehammer to move aside. A rider with a spear wanted to attack Yan Jin, but he managed to dodge again, and the rider jumped over him. The disciple watched Yan Jin and said that this child does not even understand what to do and where to go, so his luck will probably end here. Yan Kin ran forward and stepped onto a tile with letters, so the game of chess began. Yan Jin stood in his place with a satisfied smile. The disciple who was still watching was very surprised and rather decided to report what was happening here to the old sorcerer. The old sorcerer looked at Yan Jin with some incomprehension and said that the system had changed for some reason. He asked the student why this could happen. The student replied that he did not know how it happened and he had never seen such a thing before. The old sorcerer asked how long ago it happened, and the disciple told him that it happened about less than a minute ago. Then the old sorcerer said that they should just look on and wait for what would happen. Yan Jin moved the horse to the fourth row, and then moved the cannon to the third column, and then captured the elephant himself. Yan Jin then said that by standing here, he feels that he can observe this whole board and can control everything from this place. Yan Jin said that playing chess is very cool, and he was very sorry that he could only play one round. Then Yan Jin said to hand him the king and the pieces moved again. Then he shouted for the king to be captured and now, there was nowhere to run. Yan Jin was able to pass the second test. The apprentice and the old sorcerer were still watching. The student said that this child's luck could be very good. Then the old sorcerer replied that even he had never met such an unusual strategy and asked if his disciple really believed that it was just pure luck. The old sorcerer told his disciple to go and announce that Yan Jin had passed the second test and, like king, 
was entering the final, third stage of the test of mountains and seas. The disciple went to announce that Yan Jin was able to pass the second test, and will be able to get to the final of the trial of mountains and seas. At this time, everyone in the Yan tribe was waiting for the trial of the mountains and seas to end. Some person told the head of the Yan clan that someone was coming out of the portal. Everyone immediately went to the portal and waited. Several people came out of the portal, among them were Yan Hui and Yan Yang. The head of the Yan clan asked them what was on the test of the mountains and seas. Yan Hui replied that they had failed, and Yan Yang added that they had not even managed to pass the first stage. Yan Yang bowed a log in front of the clan head and said that to his great regret, they simply did not have enough time. If there had been at least a little more time, everything could have been completely different. The old head of the Yan clan frowned and said that there was absolutely nothing to worry about, because the test of the mountains and seas is quite difficult, and to hold out as long as they all held out, this is already a great success. Then the head of the Yan clan asked who was able to pass the first test. Yan Jin looked at the head of his clan and said that Yan Jin was able to pass the test. The head of the Yan clan was very surprised and said that Yan Jin is very young, so it is not known whether he will be able to go further and whether he will last to the end. Then Yan Yang said that Yan Jin was just lucky to meet a weak monster during the passage of the first stage. He said that Yan Jin still hasn't awakened the powers of his flame and no matter how lucky he is, he still has absolutely no use without his skills. The head of the clan said that Yan Yang may be right, but passing the first stage of the test of mountains and seas is already very impressive. The portal started to close and everyone started to panic. The old sorcerer announced that King of the Kingman clan and Yan Jin of the Yan clan are moving into the third, final stage, the trials of mountains and seas, so now the portal will close. Yan Yang said that it just couldn't be. The head of the Yan clan was surprised that Yan Jin was able to go to the final stage of the trial of mountains and seas. The others were no less surprised than the head of the Yan clan. Yan Jin moved through the portal again and fell to the ground. He began to get very indignant and ask questions about why it was impossible to move it properly. King was very surprised by Yan Jin's appearance and asked how he was able to get to this stage. Yan Jin sat on the ground and looked around, and then said that the third stage is very gloomy. Then he noticed the girl and said that it was a very interesting question about how he was able to get to this stage. Yan Jin said that in order to break that huge formation of warriors, a lot of strength is needed. The girl thought about it and looked at Yan Jin. Yan Jin said that King must have seen for herself that the gate guard in the center was the key to breaking the formation. The girl said that among the formation, she could feel a very great magical power from that place. In addition, the rest of the soldiers were protecting the gate guard. Yan Jin laughed and said that this was what he expected from the Mudaka. She turned out to be very perceptive. He then said that unlike her, he didn't have such discerning eyes, which was why he couldn't use such brute force. Yan Jin said that when he was met by a cannon, he had nowhere to run and therefore had to hit him with his bare fist, after which he himself was destroyed. The girl looked at him with some indignation and did not quite understand. Yan Jin, meanwhile, continued to tell his story that then a horse galloped up to him and he had no choice but to fight, because he is a real hero and never retreats anywhere. Then he turned to the girl and said that she did not even imagine how dangerous it could be for him, because he was surrounded by soldiers, horses, guns from all sides, although it did not frighten him at all, so he continued to fight. Then he said that after all this, he was finally able to deliver several blows to the opponents, and then beat them half to death, and beat them until they started crying and calling for their mother. And the king was so scared that he knelt down and began to beg for mercy from him. But Yan Jin did not waste a single second and killed the gate guard, so he passed the second stage. The girl still continued to listen to Yan Jin's story, and he said that during the entire second stage, no one could even touch the edge of his shirt. Yan Jin showed her his shirt as proof and asked her to look at the fact that he really has absolutely no damage on his clothes. King frowned, and Yan Jin said that he assured her that she could leave all the monsters that they would meet on the way to him, because these are the affairs of a real hero, and he should not even be concerned with these problems. The girl looked at Yan Jin and then pointed her finger forward, telling him that the third stage was there. In front of them was just a giant egg. Suddenly, the shell of this egg began to crack, and Yan Jin and King stood and looked at it, not understanding what they should do now. They moved away and hid behind stone slabs to hide from a possible blow. The egg shell burst and a huge snake with red eyes appeared. Yan Jin looked and asked what it was. The snake hissed menacingly and headed towards Yan Jin and King. They stood and looked at the snake. Through this snake, they saw all the monsters from the previous stages. Yan Jin hid behind the stone slabs again and said that it was definitely over now, 
and this time they would really both die here. King was very calm. The snake, meanwhile, was still there. The student said that he thinks this snake monster is one of the ancient monsters. The old sorcerer replied that he could not even suggest that this would be the final stage of the trial of mountains and seas. Yan Jin shouted that he, like a real fearless hero, meets all monsters and asks who wants to fight with him first. But when the snake approached, Yan Jin was a little scared. King came forward and Yan Jin said that since she wanted it, he simply had to let her be the first. The girl tried to use the secret king technique and the bloody thorn vine on the snake in order to strangle the snake, but it did not help and the snake broke free from the shackles of the king, pushing the girl aside. The snake wanted to hit the girl with its long tail, but king managed to dodge and the snake's tail crushed the stone lying next to it into small pieces. The snake hissed again and had already directed its mouth towards the king lying on the ground. Everyone was watching in anticipation. The disciple and the old sorcerer were very serious. At that moment, Yin Jin thought that King might well die now. But, fortunately, King managed to use a shield of bloody thorn roses to protect herself from the monster. Then King decided to use a single clash of blood spikes. She attacked the snake with her power, but the snake was still alive. Then King repeated the same thing again, and in addition used a bloody thorn vine. The disciple watched and thought that King had incredible strength, Yan Jin thought the same way. The girl thought that she had already been able to defeat the snake monster, but after looking closer, she realized that this was not the case. The snake hit King with its tail again, and she flew back. The disciple said that even such powerful sorcery does not harm this monster. Then he saw that Yan Jin was also trying to do something and he became very curious to know what he wanted. Yan Jin said that everything was exactly as he thought. It was free to rely only on brute force, so he decided that it was time to use his secret weapon. Yan Jin suddenly took out a crossbow from behind his back and said that in most cases the weakness of such creatures is their eyes, and that the real strength of an engineer manifests itself in such moments of life. Yan Jin took aim, calculated the trajectory of the wind, closed one eye and calculated the trajectory of the bullet in order not to miss and hit the target exactly. Yan Jin then said that there is absolutely nothing in this world that cannot be solved with an arrow and Yan Jin finally released his arrow. But, unfortunately, he missed and did not hit the snake's eye itself, but slightly above the eye, so in embarrassment he ran back. But then, he decided that it was always necessary to use two arrows and decided to wait for the snake to crawl closer to him so that he could strike. Yan Jin took aim and said that if it didn't work out to hit the target after the second arrow, then there is always a third one. Yan Jin fired the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so ten arrows, and then a volley of a thousand arrows. 